Woody Allen may be one of the most celebrated filmmakers of our time, but all that fame and attention hasn't been enough to shield him from controversy. In fact, his once prestigious position high up on the Hollywood ladder has only made his personal problems that much worse. And while the Annie Hall director was once universally applauded by critics and fans alike, his career and reputation have been on a steady downhill trajectory. Join Factsverse as we take a closer look at some of the most scandalous complaints that have been leveled against the octogenarian film star. Woody's Early Life Lessons When Woody was just 20 years old, writer Danny Simon taught him a few rules about comedy that he's never since forgotten. The most important thing, always trust your judgment because all external opinions are essentially meaningless. While back then Woody was basically a nobody getting his footing in the industry, today his name has been thoroughly run through the mud despite the fact that he's the man behind some of the most critically acclaimed comedy films of the 20th century. For the last two decades, there's really only one thing critics and the public think about when discussing Woody Allen. It's undeniable Allen is an influential and downright genius filmmaker, but his personal character leaves much to be desired. Mia Farrow's Molestation Accusation in 1992, it came to light that Allen, who was then 57, was having an affair with Soon Yi Previn, who was just 21 years old at the time. While that in and of itself wouldn't be that shocking, especially in Hollywood, where enormous age gaps in relationships are business as usual, what made this particular situation so unusual was how Previn was the adopted daughter of Allen and his long-term partner Mia Farrow. During Wood and Mia's predictably messy breakup, Pharaoh accused Woody of sexually assaulting their seven-year-old adopted daughter Dylan. It's worth mentioning Alan and Pharaoh also adopted a son named Moses and had a biological son named Satchel, who has since taken on the name Ronan. By the time of this accusation, Pharaoh also had six other children of her own, Soon Yi included. According to reports from that time, in addition to accusing Woody of sexually assaulting Dylan, Pharaoh also testified she believed Alan was homosexual and might be inclined to abuse Satchel as well. While being gay certainly doesn't mean anyone is any more likely to commit these kinds of egregious acts, Pharaoh evidently believed there was some sort of correlation. A source close to Mia's family now denies that she ever feared Alan was gay or that he would molest Satchel. Alan has since told reporters he believed from day one that people would have seen these accusations as laughable rubbish, so he never really took them seriously back then. In the 90s, it was mainly Alan's affair with his stepdaughter Soon Yi that people considered scandalous. But in recent years, after Ronan and Dylan have publicly spoken out against their father, while Moses and Soon Yi have come to his defense, attention has instead pivoted to the molestation claims. In 2014, Dylan told the New York Times that Alan is a prime example of the way society fails the survivors of sexual abuse. Two years later, Ronan told The Hollywood Reporter that even though Alan had never been convicted of any crime, that didn't give the press a free pass to silence victims or fail to take their allegations seriously. Obviously, there is much more awareness in today's world of the prevalence of sexual abuse than back in the 90s. Likewise, the public has grown increasingly afraid of being on the wrong end of history. These days, if you were to question a victim's story, you'd be viewed as a rape apologist. As such, these old allegations against Woody Allen have been given more power than they had in the past. Allen's name regularly gets lumped in with other entertainment industry figures like Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, who have experienced extreme falls from grace over their sexual assault allegations and subsequent convictions. While these two men and other infamous alleged offenders like R. Kelly, Jeffrey Epstein, and even Michael Jackson have all been accused of assaulting multiple victims, thus forming a pattern of predatory behavior, Allen has only been accused of one instance of molestation and was never convicted of any such crime. So why hasn't Woody taken action? Allen doesn't care what people say about him. Woody says it simply wouldn't serve him to sue. He doesn't want it to become, as he calls it, tabloid fodder for years by taking his complaints to court. On top of that, he claims, rather frankly, to not care what the media thinks about him. In his latest memoir, Apropos of Nothing, Allen insists the accusation of him being some kind of predator is merely a small part of the story. But you wouldn't get that impression by reading the book. The way he describes the fallout from his breakup with Pharaoh reads a lot like someone that cares quite a bit. When you read how Allen talks about the events of 1992, you get the impression he was shocked and greatly disturbed by the accusation. He discusses at great length his frustration with well-meaning citizens 
fueled with moral indignation, who were eager to take a stand on an issue they knew nothing about. In 2020, several prominent actors who had worked with Allen after the initial scandal, but before the public had its change of heart on him, including Greta Gerwig, Rebecca Hall, Mira Sorvino, and Colin Firth, came out and expressed deep remorse for having chosen to continue working with him. Other stars who have refused to denounce him, such as Alan Alda, Alec Baldwin, and Larry David, have been publicly shamed for not jumping aboard the cancel Woody Allen bandwagon. Allen has called the trend of actors who he worked with denouncing him as silly. He also thinks the world needs to listen to the testimony of those who worked in his home back in 1992. One of these individuals, Monica Thompson, worked as a nanny who provided care for Farrow and Allen's children. Thompson gave the court two sworn affidavits claiming Farrow had tried to pressure her into backing the molestation charges. She instead claimed Allen was the better parent and insisted everything Farrow was saying about him wasn't true. Looking at the facts. After Mia Farrow alleged that Allen molested Dylan in their home in Connecticut, doctors who examined the girl found no evidence that indicated abuse. Allen was then investigated by Yale New Haven Hospital's Sexual Abuse Clinic, as well as New York's Child Welfare Administration. Yale concluded Dylan had not been molested by Allen, and the New York City Welfare Administration reaffirmed this by saying after a lengthy 14-month investigation, no credible evidence was found that Dylan had been abused. The Yale New Haven report even included a statement by Dr. Dr. John Leventhal, who headed the investigation, indicating Dylan's statements seemed to be rehearsed. Leventhal further theorized she had been coached by her mother. In 2018, Dylan denied this, however, saying her mother only ever encouraged her to tell the truth. The same year, though, Moses seemed to give Leventhal's hypothesis credence by saying he had been brainwashed by Pharaoh and that he had to follow his mother's script in order to prove his loyalty. Some claim Leventhal never actually interviewed Dylan, but according to publicly available records, she had been interviewed nine times over a period of six months by two social workers who were members of the Leventhal team. In the 30 years since Allen was accused of molestation, many of the facts of the case have been marred by public opinion. Unfortunately, almost everything people believe about the case is inaccurate. For one thing, it's been said that Allen had received therapy sessions for inappropriate feelings that he had towards Dylan. Furthermore, it's been implied that these feelings were sexual in nature. Allen, of course, adamantly denies these claims. Court records seem to back up Allen on this matter. A child psychologist named Susan Coates, who had evaluated Dylan and treated Satchel, only described Dylan and Allen's relationship as inappropriately intense, denying that it was in any form sexual or romantic. Coates felt like it was only inappropriate in the way Allen emotionally neglected Pharaoh's older children, instead focusing almost exclusively on baby Dylan. Dr. Catherine Prescott, Alan's therapist for the last two decades, reaffirmed this position when she testified there had never been any indication that her client suffered from sexual perversion or deviant sexual behavior. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Woody Allen is the monstrous sexual predator that the media has made him out to be? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.